Are you, are you pointing at me? Oh, where are we going? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I'm getting the mm, from summer right now. Uh, today, we're painting up the second part of our Quinjet. If you joined us a couple weeks ago, we started working on this bad boy um, with an airbrush. We started doing a little brush work on the lines. And we're just going to continue along with some paneling and maybe get to those orange windows. Um, like you see in the studio version, well, we, we'll try to replicate that here. Who knows? Well, we'll just make something else up. Maybe there'll be green windows. Who knows? So um, I say let's kick it to that mini cam. Boom! And get to painting. How's everyone doing? I'm going to put on a glove. I like wearing a glove when I'm working on this kind of stuff. Let's me kind of keep my fingerprints off stuff. The oils from the, the natural oils from your hands. Brought way more brushes than I need. So I got a little bit of blue. Something sort of similar to what we had last time. I don't remember exactly what color paint it was, so close enough is good enough. That's what I say. It's true. The only the only prescription is a Quinjet for the fever I got. So we're just using a brush, side of the brush, with a light blue, just to frame it up. The brush isn't super damp. There's barely any paint on there. We're just wanting to get like a little edge. Personally, I like it when it's a little kind of sketchy and rough so I don't need perfect lines I kind of just let it be kind of jagged and such it gives it a little more personality a little more zazz a little more zazz Worlds for MCP? Is there plans for MCP worlds? I don't think there is. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the chat. Hanging out, painting a super quinjet. That's what we do. That's what we do. We paint the quinjet all day. Sometimes we sing a song about painting the Quinjet. The first part was better. <laughs> uh, it's a non-interactive terrain piece. It's got the X4X on the bottom and that is the proper way to say X4X you have to say X4X like a 90s uh, commercial I was painting terrain um, some other terrain with this brush and this brush is beat and um, I can totally tell it's a it's in a pretty rough state. Yeah, I think this this miniature is super cool. I think it just adds so much to the table and that narrative story. Here, you want me to just hold it down? I'll just hold it down here. I'll just hold it down here. You're, you're, you're way more worried about than I am. Don't be sorry. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about much. Maybe when we're done, I should put a... Maybe... maybe Maybe we should get a stencil and do a shield logo or something on this. I don't know. Yeah, 
impact movement. I don't think the Quinjet moves. Like I said, we're just going around all these little panels, all the little edges. Just giving everything that nice pop. This looks especially good on the areas that's that's still black. Blighted brush. Always looking. For, always looking for new announcements. Blighted brush. I see you. You barely got Shadowland, Daredevil, and Electra. Plenty more coming. We should have some announcements pretty soon. I'm not in charge though, so they're coming. There's always more in the works than you can even imagine. Than you can even imagine. Flip it upside down. See if we can get some straight lines today. You admit you have a problem. Yeah, but how much can I imagine, Night Goblin? That's the question. Is the shot okay? Just checking. This is some little lines. Tip of the brush. Yeah, projection schedules are always shifting and changing. So, you know, we adjust where we can and The best laid plans, you know, never survive contact with the enemy. You know, we plan and plan for, I'm sure you've heard us talk about how, you know, a lot of times, you know, we're, we're, we're years out in um, the schedule, right? Like, I think uh, Preston and I were working on concepts the other day that are, you know, two years out or more. But that doesn't mean in two years the plan is the same. You gotta stay fluid and BK does a good job of moving and juking and jiving with the with the all the new stuff coming up and in the world. You gotta flow like water. Just a little, whoop, nope. Get rid of that line, I don't like that one. Yeah, it's true. There's nothing worse than being like, check this out. And then a month later, we have to announce that's behind. So 
And I, I don't like that feeling. Um, I've definitely been on the receiving end of that, of getting super hyped for something and then it gets delayed. So we do our best to try to avoid that situation. So sometimes that means we're going to be a little more cautious and we're going to announce a little closer to dates. I think the wings need some little scritch scratches. Just choosing some little spots here and there. Not a lot, just some little glints and gleans. I'm really not trying to be too like realistic here. I'm just rule of cool. It's what we like to go by anyways. The rule of cool. Because if it looks cool, it doesn't matter what it does. Which is exactly how I build my squads. Hey, Dallas, you know that guy has no synergy with that other character, right? Yeah, but look at it. Um, I absolutely love Adepticon. I think I've spoke about that many times. Great show. Oh man, you messed up my line. Yeah. Making me move suddenly. Um, Adepticon's a heck of a show, and um, yeah, hopefully next year. If everything goes according to plan. I have a giant Odin trophy to give away. Have you all seen that giant Odin trophy? I need to give it to somebody. The question is who? Who is going to show up and claim that Odin trophy from me? Who's going to step up and say, it is I, it is I who is worthy. For whoever they be, we shall crown them the worthy. And then we're going to take a picture. And take a picture of your, uh, your miniature. And then we're going to show it off to the world. All right, let's try some other stuff. We're just going to get a nice semi-white. 
Does that look good on screen? Is that where you want it? I don't like that brush. So my goal here, should we do the orange windows? I mean, orange is just a good complementary color to this black blue. Is monogamy in the way? So no matter what color we choose today for the windows, I want to start with this nice off-white. This will give us a solid foundation for lighter colors without fighting the dark color underneath to make it pop. Make it a little more watercolory. It can be a little messy because usually on this kind of stuff I go back and clean it up with a little black to trim it. It doesn't need to be a perfect coat. Just need a nice foundation. And what I've learned is I actually prefer if it's not a solid coat. Um, it lets me get a little more, um, I want to say, use the word artsy with the glass. I don't have to be as precise. Yeah, I saw a lot of pictures from Adepticon and a lot of them being uh, the different Quinjets. Um, I think my favorite one was the one... Oh, I know who painted it. Um, oh, I know the name. Rats, I'm going to have to look it up. Uh, but they painted it with a camouflage, uh, camouflaged hydra symbol on the top and I was like that's so fun like that's that creative narrative and miniature that I love to see And even if you're playing games, if you did not make your way over to the painting area, you kind of did yourself a disservice. The painting area at Adepticon is super friendly, very open, um, and some real 
amazing uh, miniature painters hang out there uh, just painting and sharing tips and tricks and secrets. Uh, it's a great place just to like kind of up, kind of like up your painting philosophies and the way you're looking at painting miniatures. A lot of talent and knowledge setting under that, uh, those stairs. It's definitely my favorite place to hang out. Squizzle, 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 squizzle. Now what? Let's start. Let's get some silvers going. Oh, Blighty Brothers came in fourth in the contest of champions. Congratulations. And a little more silver. I don't get to play in Vince myself anymore, but it's always exciting to see all those tables filled. And even though I don't get to play in events at conventions, I always try to walk through and take a look at all the painted miniatures. I love walking through and seeing everybody's uh, collection of painting. Oh, we're having a sleepless in Seattle moment on the chat. They made the connection. I mean, that's the true fun part of uh, going to conventions is making friends and then catching up with friends that you only see at conventions. Is Monogan in the way? Rich Mid, hello. I'm just painting Quinjets and talking about Adepticon. I think on the studio one, I painted this little area silver. We're going to do it here. I think I'll just add a nice contrast point.
of this be silver. I'm take a little black and silver, mix it together, maybe a touch of blue. Usually takes like two coats. Being a taskmaster. I'm just smashing paint in there, Summer. I don't know where I'm at. <sighs> Any news? Yeah, check out uh, Instagram and Twitter for all the latest news information and announcements coming from Atomic Mass Games. Be sure to check out those social media platforms. Got lots of stuff in the works, and we are gearing up for some mini strav and I'm sure BK has tons of announcements and summer of tons of posts ready to go. We're working on them. Everything's everything's coming. They only love me for my news, Summer. I'm just a boy with a brush. Just a boy with a brush. Another thing we can do here. If you want, you ain't gotta. Can dark line everything. Every time. This is some black paint. It's really, really watered down. Uh, what say of blue is the quinja? It looks great. Uh, it was a big mix. You'd have to go back and look for part one. To get the recipe, because honestly, um, I'm a monster and I don't Remember, write recipes down. Dark line train, oh no. Why, why is that a no no? Hello, Helix Gaming. Hello, everyone joining us. We're just painting a Quinjet. This is a narrative centerpiece. This is more than just terrain. This is a hobby manager kit of elegance and refinement.
Those dark lines are just gonna make all those little panels pop. You need time to dark line your miniatures first. Huh. Have you been following the paint streams? I try to teach how to do miniature painting in an hour or less. Well, I feel like it's, I feel like we're getting close to time to do some, some real, like intensive painting on stream. Just cuts all those lines real nice. What's the chance of getting this Quinjet I painted for a prize? This is my Quinjet. They can't take it away from me. Just breathe. Let the paint and the brush do its job. Just like that. Am I not getting in the way? A little bit. Yeah, look at that. I think we can even around these little raised panels as well. How about a full-size helicarrier that doubles as a game mat? It'd be an expensive game mat. So my goal would be to go all the way through that. I think let's do some of this orange um, canopy. I'm getting a little orange on my brush. So this is not the smoothest, most perfect two brush blend, and nor is it meant to be. I want it sort of watery 
want it sort of imperfect. I want it to kind of create like a lot of imperfections in it because we can utilize that to kind of create sort of the random willy-nilliness of the uh, light reflecting in and around the panes of glass. We're just using that second brush. And the reason I like doing this and showing this is because it, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then as you learn the technique, you can perfect it and make incredibly smooth blends and transitions. But that should not be your goal starting out. Starting out should be getting a feel for the way the paint moves, the way your hand moves, the way the brush moves. Brush controls everything. I always find it fascinating when someone posts a paint job on social media and the first response is, recipe? My recipe my recipes probably won't get you anywhere. Ask about technique. You know, our goal here on the streams is not to teach you what to paint, but how to paint. If I say lay blue 47 and then do an edge highlight of Citron blue 14 and then do a wash of, you know, Dark Meridian or something, some nonsense name. And I'm only kind of teaching you what to paint. I like to focus on how to paint. See how those imperfect white lines? They're kind of giving that painterly effect underneath. We're just going to keep building into that. We're going to let that dry a little touch. I could pull out the blow dryer, I guess. No one wants that. Stretch it out. Just stretch it out. I feel like I'm calling out a dance at a wedding uh, reception. Now just stretch it out. Can we see? It's a bigature. Right now it's a little messy, but we're just going to keep refining and defining. It's 
got to dry. It's got to dry up. Now's the time to be asking questions because I'm just fiddling about. This panel needs way more, but it's real damp. Maui Mike Beard. Wouldn't that be Mike Wowie Beard? My glue of choice for miniatures would be plastic glue for plastic miniatures. Rich mid. Like any good plastic glue, you know, Testers makes a heck of a plastic glue. You know, I prefer plastic miniatures and to make plastic miniatures, I prefer plastic glue. Welds it together. They survive, my, my test miniatures, like when we get the test shots in, I always put them through quite the test and they always survive. Oh, thanks, Rogue. Actually, when I left the house today, I said the same thing. Looking good to myself in the mirror. No. No one's believing me. Let's hit that with a blow dryer. Or as I call it, the paint accelerating heat device. I don't know. Ready? Three, two, one. See how quick that is? I always, I, always, I, I used to have a friend, I'd, I'd be like, are you painting? He's like, yeah. I'd look over at his desk and he was playing a video game and the miniatures were on the desk and I'm like, no, you're not painting at all. He'd be like, I'm waiting for washes to dry. I'm like, oh no, no, stop it. Get a blow dryer. Am I using a wash for the glass or a thin orange? I'm using an extremely thin orange over a shoddily applied uh, base of off-white. Um, I'm just laying on a layer and I'm using a second brush that's sort of damp. I'm sort of letting it just kind of stretch out over top. And I'm, I'm letting it be sort of really imperfect and kind of a mess because I want it to look imperfect. I want a lot of um, texture and shape to read on that glass because it'll look more naturalistic and, you know, real-ish, exaggerated realism. I 
definitely am not a real paint, realistic painter. But I like exaggerated realism. So we're just, we're really just slopping it on. And if we get streaks, we get streaks. If we get ziggles, we get ziggles. Don't ask me what a ziggle is. It's a highly technical term. Is the plan to get a thick gloss varnish coat at the color supply, or are you just going to let it sheen through the paint? Uh, I usually just do a. Um, I usually just do a layer of. Um, how's that spot right there? I usually just do a layer of matte varnish. Um, I prefer matte varnish. I like the way it takes my metals and tones it down um, and sort of dulls the metals out because then I go back through and I highlight everything again with uh, more metals and that makes it look even more metallic. Um, also, I just like the way it, it kind of makes my paints look. But I don't like matte paints. I'm weird like that. So you can see how imperfect this is. That's fine. And I'm getting paint kind of all over the some other areas, but that's going to be cleaned up. Yeah, and also I've been trained, uh, you know, as a studio, as a studio painter, we don't want gloss um, varnish on studio miniatures. Um, Reason being is when we go to take a photo of it, it's so glossy, so much light kind of gets reflected back at the camera. And it kind of blows out the picture sometimes. So instead of just even considering or dealing with that, um, we just don't do... We just don't do gloss. Um, and so, sort of being trained as a studio painter, I've kind of taken that as like th just the way I paint and the, my, my preference. It's got some nice straight line reflections in here. So all I'm doing is applying paint and then I'm using that second brush to kind of push that line into a straight line. So it's sort of a reductive approach to painting. Um, if you ever want a straight line, like it's quite, quite interesting what you can do with that brush. I'm gonna get a nice bright paint here and I'll show you. Like say you want a nice straight line here. How's that? Say you want a nice straight line here. That's not a straight line. Second brush, it's a little damp, reductive. Yeah. Get rid of the excess. Look at that line. It's way easier to do. Can you see that on screen very good? 
can get a nice straight line pretty easily by reductive painting. Instead of just trying to draw a straight line, it's much easier just to kind of uh, erase paint. Now the true secret to my orange glass. A little burnt umber. Normally, if you're a two brush blending, you want it smashed down into the paint like that. But 